Hi, my name is Steve Houston. Welcome to my channel where I discuss all things related to financial services, their products, the compensation plans. We compare the IMOs and that's what I'm going to try to help you with today. And the standard that we apply on this channel is where I can supply third party documentation because we know third party documentation beats any conversation, which is what I want you to get today is third party documentation and also the right documentation from your IMO. In any case, when I can supply that to back up my opinion or my rhetoric, I supply it. That way you can decide what's best for you. Now, the opinions in these videos are mine. Opinions generated over years in this industry, making a lot of bad decisions. Seeing things as they really are once inside an IMO is not the best course of action. And the truth is, trying to get out of an IMO once you've decided to move on is not the best place to be either. Now in this video, I'm going to try to explain in very simple terms why this network marketing approach to building an agency has nothing to do with you. And it's all about the upline, okay? Not about you. It's about what's in the best interest of the upline. First, let's talk about the reason why these upline recruiters force you to recruit in the first place. Basically, it's their business model, okay? It's not for me or for you to decide whether or not that's a good business model for them but it is our place to decide if it's a good business model for us. It's how they build their agency. It's how they build their IMO. You bringing them new people under the idea that it somehow benefits you. And it could, but not for quite some time. Since many of you tell me all the time, look, I, I don't mind recruiting. And by the way, I get a lot of calls, texts, and emails from, from all of you that support this channel. For that, I'm very, very grateful. But I'm not against recruiting. I'm not against building an agency. Obviously, I'm doing it, have been doing it for many years. What I'm against is forcing you to do something that you're not comfortable with. My issue with it is, is withholding income that rightfully belongs to you, right? Because you don't want to bring them new people and start recruiting. You want to go out there and be successful first, that's honorable, I understand it, and that's the way it should be. No one should be forced to do something they're not comfortable with doing. On this video, I'm gonna to try to explain in very simple terms why this network marketing approach to building an agency has really nothing to do with you, and it's all about your upline. First, let's talk about the reason why these upline recruiters force you to recruit in the first place. Well, number one, it's their business model. It may not be our business model, yours or mine, but it is theirs and that's their choice. It's also our choice to either agree to it or not to agree to it based on what our personal standards are for ourselves and our business, right? But building their agency, building their IMO is all about you bringing them new people under the idea that somehow it benefits you. Now it could, but really not for quite some time, especially when you're not even licensed, right? Many of you have told me on the phone, I get emails, phone calls, and, and texts from you all the time, several hundred a week. Many of you, again, don't want to recruit initially until you're at least making money. And by the way, many of you are under this impression that I'm against recruiting. I'm not. I think it should be something you consider when you are leading from the front, when you are out there in the field putting your name on an application. Obviously, I'm building my own agency and have been for a number of years, but I believe you can't tell somebody to do something you're not willing to do yourself. It's all about leading from the front and also not being in the position to where you're allowing someone to take money away from you because you're not conforming to their business plan, right? How they force you to do something that you don't really want to do? Well, it's simple. You're not going to get promoted of the comp plan unless you do. Doesn't matter how much production you do, your income is capped until you bring them new people. It's a trade-off, plain and simple. Now, let's take a look at the board here. Really, I've kind of laid out a sample comp plan, starting you off at 60% and going all the way up to 110%, which is a comp plan many of you are familiar with. You come in at 60%, after about every two or three thousand dollars, you can advance up the comp plan based on nothing more than your own production. So you come in at 60%, you go to 65, 70, 75, and 80. And this is all done basically on your own pen. In other words, you getting some leads, you running some appointments, and you go out there and writing some apps. 
This is all in your control 100%. Then all of a sudden you get to right here about the 80% mark, okay, and you're done. It doesn't matter how many applications that you write from that point forward, you're going nowhere until you bring them some people and those people produce. So what are those requirements that have nothing to do with you selling insurance but everything to do with putting money in their pockets, okay? Now, I was talking to somebody yesterday, they go, well, I talked to so-and-so and so-and-so, and they told me all you have to do is do $50,000 and we'll promote you. Again, not the whole story. That's why you want to see this stuff in writing. So $50,000 of issue premium, even if you could do it with your own pen, and many of you will never do it on your own pen, not even close, your agency would need to do at least $50,000 plus have 15 agents you counting as one, participate in that business for three consecutive months, then they will allow you to be promoted on your own sales, plus override the production of those agency to get beyond 80 and start to move up to 110%. Sounds simple, right? Well, not exactly. I always love to look at the numbers and then confront myself in a mirror as to whether I think I can really do those numbers and how realistic it is that I think I can be in that position. Here's the numbers. About 10%, okay, of the people that you hire will ever put their name on an application. So what does that mean to you? Well, it means that you're going to have to go out and hire one, let's put it in here, 150 to 200 people minimum to hopefully get 15 people to participate in this $50,000 of issued business. In other words, it's paid business, right? Policies are in place, enforced premium. So how long do you think it's gonna take you to hire 150 to 200 agents? One to two years, maybe? And all along, no matter how much you sell, your commissions will pass to your upline. So let's just say that you do five apps a week, which I consider very part-time production. That means, so let me break this down for you, okay? The average sale in this industry is a thousand bucks. Okay, if you're doing 20 apps a month or five a week, minimum production, okay, that 1,000 times 20 is $20,000. The IMO that I'm at, that would put you at 100%. With this IMO, you're stuck at 80%. That's 20% of your money that's passing to the upline. What's 20% of 1,000 bucks? $200. I'll answer it for you. Times 20, that's $4,000 a month of your commissions pass into your upline, which in many cases, they're just recruiters. They have no training, very little support, maybe watch some videos, kick you out of the door, and you're off and running. That's their business plan. Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what their business plan is, and you have to decide do you want your $4,000 a month passing up to your upline forever until you get 15 agents recruit 150 to 200 to get those 15 agents to do $50,000 worth of issued business? That's the question. In for its premium. Okay? So if you're talking to a recruiter, you're talking to an IMO, make sure you don't just ask and they tell you the answer because honestly, most of them only know what they were told. Ask to see the compensation plan and usually another sheet which includes the promotion guidelines. That's where the circles are drawn. And if you can't rise to the top of the comp plan 100 to 110% on your own pen, no recruiting required. It must be optional at your choice, your decision not the uplines. Honestly, you should really consider your options because there are other options. Here's the point to all of this. Think about this for a second. In no state across the entire country is it legal for you to receive overrides from any agent that you recruit to your agency until you're licensed. And in many cases, you had to be licensed in every state that you have agents in for many carriers. So with that knowledge, so with that knowledge, you had to think about what is the real reason why you should be recruiting 
before your license. Once that settles in, you'll know what the purpose of this video was. So as I always say, my recommendation is absolutely you should build an agency with the right IMO and the right agency that can support you and your agents. However, you should do it when you're leading from the front, putting your name on an application first, and also be able to receive an override on that agent's production. Rather than having any overrides that comes from the agents that you recruit with your hard work, pass you and go to your upline. I hope that helps. Share this video out if you would. Do somebody else a favor. I can tell you I get hundreds of communications a week from you folks on this YouTube channel. People that stumbled across it, right? People that have already made the decision and wish they had not. People that are in the middle of making the decision and are confused. It can be very confusing. That's why I focus on it so much to save you from the pain of regret and trying to get out to get to the right place the first time, right? Some place where you have a coach and a mentor, right? that's with the right IMO, that coach and mentor is the difference maker as long as they are partnering with you for your success, they have a training program, they have years of experience of putting their own name on an application, and they can teach you skills that are required to succeed in this business long term, match that person with the right IMO that gives you the right comp plan, the right products, the right leadership, the right technology, the right leads, no recycling, no, no redating, no repurposing of the leads. And they own their own lead program. These are things that are critical. I'm gonna do another video, so stay tuned. It'll be right up here. And that video will be an extension of this video once you get past the recruiting options. What are the other things that you should be looking for to set yourself up for success before you sign the dotted line? The simplest answer is, again, to align with someone that's successful and replicate what they do. Duplication, not reinvention, as long as they have a time-tested and proven system that you can plug into. It's what the agents do that are the most successful. So find a mentor, not a recruiter, that's leading, ask for proof, talk to some other agents, and make a quality decision. As always, remember, the surest way to succeed is to be determined never to quit. You gotta fail, you gotta be bad before you're good, you gotta get out there, get blade up a little bit, and learn this business. That's why that coach or mentor that you can get on the phone and talk to every case, every day, that at first very critical three, six, nine, 12 months of your career is so very, very important. It changed my career and it can change yours and you want to succeed in this incredible industry. As usual, I'm always available to talk to you. Send me a text, send me email, right? Give me a call, let's jump on the phone and let's talk this out and we'll see what's best for you. And if we're fit to work together, fantastic. If not, at least I can help you make your decision. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you for being part of this channel. I'm grateful to have you as a part of this channel and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.